Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodgins. Joining us today, newly crowned world champion, although she's been there before, and the 200 breaststroke hasn't been there before, Lily King. Lily, how's it going? Hello, how are you? to sit down and chat with you man from our end you had a wild ride in Budapest oh, yes <laughs> um, so I'm excited wow. to talk to you about that uh first off just coming off of trials um how are you feeling just about your overall performances in Greensboro and just heading into world champs off of that momentum yeah um trials I thought went pretty well um other than the 100 the 100 could have been a little bit better Um, but yeah, I thought trials was good. It was kind of weird just because it was in April. Um, so normally like it's April where we're like starting to fine tune things for, um, you know, whatever trials meet is in June or July. Uh, and now it was like, okay, you have to be ready in April. So, uh, it was a little weird just because I feel like I relearn how to swim my races every year. Um, just like, you know, my strategy changes every year and we just have to take it as we go. Um, so I was still kind of like getting my 200 breast strategy back down for the season and getting my hundred strategy. And I hadn't even slammed the 50 yet. So, um, considering where we were at in the season, I thought Charles went really well. Yeah. And then we know what happened. after that. <laughs> And then you got COVID. How did this happen? I mean, obviously it, yeah. uh, everyone gets COVID, but yeah. Can you, Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we went to the White House right after to, you know, do Olympic team White House things. And it was actually, it's so funny. Well, it's not that funny, but it's kind of funny looking at it now. So I was like, oh my God, like this feels so normal. Like we don't, we're not wearing masks and we're just doing normal stuff and this is great. And then I got COVID. So, um, yeah, so I got COVID like right after the White House visit. Uh, I was out for probably a week. Um, I think Cody said I was out for 10 days. He's exaggerating. Uh, (laughs) But, uh, I had a couple of practices like right in a row that were not good. Um, and (laughs) I I went up to Ray and like, you know, like at this point we're all like, okay, if you feel sick, stay home. But like what swimmer is staying home when they're sick? Like you go to practice. Like that's, you know, that's what I do. That's what I've been you know taught to do my whole life. So I just went to practice and, you know, sometimes when you swim, you'll feel better. So it was about my third practice in a row. Like my body just hurt so bad. And I was like, okay, I'm used to pain, but like, this is, this is different. Um, <laughs> I went up to Ray. I was like, Hey, like, I don't feel good. <laughs> and uh, he goes, well, can you take a nap today? <laughs> I was like, you know, I don't think a nap is going to fix this. one. <laughs> um, and then he kind of like jokingly was like, well, do you have COVID? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I think I do. So yeah, I went home, took a test and yep, had COVID. So I, um, I've actually been talking to like several people who've had it. They're like, yeah, I just felt like I had a cold and I had every symptom, everything you can imagine. It was not fun. I was not enjoying it. Um, and I also don't get sick very often. So like it really kind of, it knocked me on my ass. Like, I'm not going to lie. It sucked. Um, and then like, after being out for a week and then the next week getting back in and like my chest just hurt the whole week. Um, and I was like trying not to overdo it, which for me is like the hardest thing ever. I'm like, I gotta get back into shape. Like I gotta get back and doing all the things because I have worlds in a few weeks and, um, and yeah, and it was just not happening. So I was like, okay, you know, you just gotta be patient and we'll see what happens. So, uh, yeah, it was definitely an interesting, interesting couple weeks there. Um, so, so then getting back into shape, man, that is wild. I'm still processing it. Uh, so get it when you headed out for Croatia, did you travel normally with the team? Like at the same time that they did? Yeah. So I had probably, um, I'd probably been back in for two weeks at that point. I don't know where Cody gave you his information. Um, 
you know, he likes to <laughs> for the vlog. I'll tell you the truth. I, I've been back in for a couple of weeks at that point. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was still like traveling normally with the team and doing everything normal and just trying to have something that resembled normal, even though I knew like what was going on in my body. Um, but yeah, so everything was pretty typical. So, so uh, <laughs> I talked to Mr. DeSorbo yesterday and he said <laughs> that this was, that Croatia was like a taper camp for most people. Oh, yeah. um, and so how did that manifest for you given that you're tapering, but you're also trying to get back in shape from the week that you were out of the pool. Yeah, it was, um, I think, you know, again, the theme was keep it normal. So, um, we just tried to do everything that we would do in a regular taper. Um, I had stayed up a little bit at home, but once we got to camp, we were like 10 days out of the meet. So it's like, okay, you know, let's like actually get to it and start to taper. Um, and yeah, so I just kind of did what I normally do. And I don't, I don't want to say like, I don't taper a ton, but like, I don't go down as drastically as like a lot of other people do. Like, I still keep my normal, like nine, 10 slims a week, three lifts. Like I still do the normal schedule. Like I never go down to singles. Um, so it wasn't like, it's not like I, I'm that kind of person that goes down and like does a 2k a day. And I'm like, yeah, I'm tapered. Let's go. Like I'm still doing like pretty not as intense practices, but still like keeping it up. I probably would say I'm still at five, six K a day through the meet. So, um, yeah, it was just like, kind of keep it up, keep it, keep it normal and, and see what happens. Whoa. How, why do you feel like that works for you? I mean, obviously it does, but yeah. is there, do you, do you, do you think there's a reason why? Um, I don't think I'm talented enough to be able to do it any other way, uh, <laughs> to be honest. And also like, um, I'm still, I raced seven out of the eight days. Like if I go down to 2k, like I'm going to be gassed by the end of the meet. So, and then if you look at the schedule of the meet, like, okay. And I don't do a ton of meat warm. So like I was in the 1500 meat warm up, swim the race, probably go a thousand warm down. So there you're at 2,500 without the race. And then you do that again that night. So you're already at 5k for the day. So why would you want to go down below? That's just kind of like my, my theory on it. But, um, but yeah, when you're racing all of those days, it's really hard. I think at least for someone like me to be able to like go so far down and taper, um, just to be able to sustain it for the eight day. So it's a little bit more of an endurance activity than I think a lot of people realize. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I think about it. So, so then I have to ask, how do you, how do you get your speed? You know, how do you get your power, your drive or your, the, your Lily King fast twitch going? Well, that was the problem this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've kind of always like, that's been the easy thing for me. And it's like starting to not be easy as easy. Like the 200 coming a little bit more naturally, which like I never thought I'd say, um, <laughs> But I think like we have always taken advantage of like my speed has been super easy and has just kind of just come like that. So um, I think it's something that I, since I train it all the time, like it's not like, oh, I need to get back to my speed or I need to like taper so I can get that speed and power. Like if you work on it every day, I feel like it should be there. Um, but I'm also not like a 200 pound male swimmer. So, <laughs> um, that's just kind of how it works for me. Yeah. So then, you know, you get to the meet, um, and in the hundred, you, you said you kind of relearn your race strategies every season. Mm -hmm. So for the hundred, what was that race strategy this year? What, what was it that you were trying to relearn or remaster? Yeah, I think it's just like my approach changes every year. Um, and this year was, like the beginning of the year was normal. Like I say, I'm like well, 1053 in San Antonio. I was like, all right, that's, that's pretty sad. I think I went 1052 to make the Olympic team in 2016. So I was like, all right, you know, we're doing good. Um, and then trials was fine. I was like, just kind of distracted in the race at trials. And then once we got to worlds, I was like, I saw my prelim and like everybody beat me in my heat. And I was like, Oh, okay. Like that's what we're dealing with this meet. Okay. So, um, I was kind of just like trying to go out and not die. Um, even though I didn't really have any speed going out. Um, 
that was definitely different, like hitting the 50 and not being anywhere in the first place. Um, but I think at that point I knew like I wasn't going to die. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just send it and see what happens. Um, and it actually turned out working out pretty well for the final. Um, cause everybody else died, but I did it for some reason. Um, uh, even though like I had no idea what was going on that whole race cause I was in late eight and like, I look around so much and I just had no clue. So I wasn't even mad that I was fourth cause but I couldn't see anything that was going on. So, um, yeah, I was just glad that honestly that day I was like, just glad to be in the final. So, um, you know, it's kind of crazy. so it, during the meet, uh, it, you know, you said you stay up and then you do like about 5k a day. So is it, mm-hmm. is it all just pretty easy swimming aside from the racing itself? Because yeah, like you said, you're swimming seven of the eight days. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. I mean, just like meet warm up. I mean, occasionally you'll do some like burst type stuff, maybe a start, maybe a cord every once in a while, like just to kind of get on top of the water and get that power feeling. Um, but yeah, I mean, just like very easy, like meet warm up and, and then cool down. Um, and that's about it all day. So, uh, but yeah, it's still, you know, obviously adds up to about five eight days. So. Yeah. Uh, just mentally after the hundred, where do you feel like you were? Do you feel like you had ever been in a situation like that before that was similar to that? Whatever situation you felt? Yeah, it was, it was definitely strange. Um, it was, I wasn't, I like, I wasn't down on myself though. Um, you know, I knew like, I, I was pretty sure even at camp, like the 200 was going to be my good race this year. Um, just, you know, you know, like I knew like my speed wasn't there. Um, but like, you know, seven, eight years of IU aerobic base doesn't go away in one week. So, um, so yeah, I wasn't, I really wasn't that down on myself and I have been in so many situations where I have seen like the veteran on the team be miserable and like, I didn't want to be that person. So, um, basically at that point I was like, okay, like I swim my race, drop it, let it go, focus my energy on other people. Um, so that's kind of what I tried to do. Just like, you know, we were swimming great. Like I was the only person at that point that wasn't swimming great. <laughs> um, so, um, just kind of focusing my energy on, on everybody else on the team, I think really helped me through that and just like, not, not dread it and like, not, not like worry about the race and like just things like that. So honestly, at that point I was fine. Like I was like, okay, I was fourth. Like I was barely fourth. Like, I, take it like yeah it was a slow heat but in two weeks nobody's gonna remember that it was a slow heat um so at that point it was just kind of like okay like you know I have five more days of racing like let's move on you know it's not it's not the end of my meet um I have a lot of so many more times to race and to try and do better so like you know don't worry about it it's not it's still fourth in the world like it's not that big of a deal (laughs) so um yeah so I was actually I was I was doing all right yeah and uh, how did being a team captain affect that mentality at all, if it did? Yeah, uh, I would say, well, I would say it did a lot, but also, like, similarly in 2019, like, after I got DQ'd, I kind of had the same mentality. I was like, look, like, like, some of my teammates are doing their only race tonight. Like, their one race is tonight, and I don't want to distract from that. So, um, it was kind of like a situation that I've been through before, but I think just being a captain, like, and like, I've told these people this so many times, but I had so many incredible captains growing up, like Beisel and Schmitty and Camille, my first trip, like what the, like what? (laughs) I mean, um, so I had a lot of really, really great people that kind of showed me the way, even when now looking back, I hadn't even realized it. Like their swimming wasn't going great. Um, and let that distract from the fact that like they had a team to lead and they had people to, you know, boost their mood and like be that person, um, for the rest of the team. So I think just like them kind of showing me the way, um, that definitely affected my mentality as a captain, you know, regardless of how the meet is going. Um, so yeah, I think that definitely helped a little bit. Yeah. What were you obviously no one wants to get DQ'd. It happened to you in 2019 and it happened mm-hmm. to Annie at this meet in the hundred. Um, what, was it comforting 
to you that you were able to be there with her when that happened? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, it, nobody really wants to talk to anyone after they've been DQ'd. So, um, yeah, but I think like, I think Annie kind of forgot that I had been DQ'd in 2019. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, all right, yeah, that sucks. But like, all right, let's, you know, that's just kind of how my brain works. It's like, okay, let's just move on. Um, but obviously like the hundred was her big race that meet and that ended up not happening. So that sucks, but uh, it's just something you kind of have to learn from and, and pick up and move on. And uh, I hope she'll, she'll be able to do that and, and push through it. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's always good to have a teammate there, but you know, if, after you've been decued at a major international meet, you don't really want comfort from anyone. Else. That makes sense. <laughs> um, <laughs> So then, the, so then the 50, what were you thinking heading <laughs> into that? I had no idea. Wasn't naturally there. Yeah, I was like, eh, screw it. It's a 50. Like, it's not going to hurt. Um, you know, if, if anything, going into the hunt, like going into the relay, it'd be a like warm up pace 50 for the relay. So that's a horrible mentality to have. But, you know, it was kind of like, all right, again, I barely squeaked into the final. So it's like, what do normal people do when they like really squeak into the final? Like you're like, okay, well, let's go, let's go race the person next to me. I'll try to beat the person next to me. So, um, that's kind of what I did. And I, <laughs> I got out, uh, after the final, I was like, Hey, I beat somebody. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> Who is this person. <laughs> so, you know, like, it's okay. That's, that's where I was. I, you know, it's something that was completely at that point out of my control and, it's like, all right, let's just go race. It's that's what I came here to do. I came here to race and and yeah, try to beat somebody. And, and you did. <laughs> <laughs> Got seven. You beat the person next to you. I did. Uh, so <laughs> congrats on that one. So then um, so so then the 200 breast. Uh, again, what what strategy? Cody told us a strategy that you do, <laughs> but what strategy were you trying to retool for this event this season? Um, I was trying to outrace everybody. So I'm going to go off on a little tangent here. I think swimmers are so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like swimmers. Idiots. We have, this, we have this age group mentality of I'm going to try to go best time every time I swim you're not going to go this time every time you swim. Like that is so dumb. Um, but like my dad was a distance runner. So like I kind of grew up even more, like even as much as watching swimming, I was watching track. So in like championship distance running, they never go fast. Like they literally race, 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 stay with the pack, stay with the pack until somebody decides to break loose and go for it. So it's kind of like a big game of chicken. And that's a little bit how I would like to view the 200 breaststroke, especially at this meet where I knew it was not going to take the best time to win the race. So it's kind of like, I know exactly what everyone's going to do because they swim the same race strategy every time. So I kind of decided to take that to my advantage. And since I'm confident in, in, you know, being able to change my race strategy every time, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to sit on everybody. And I did the same thing. Actually, I was being stupid. I did the same thing I did in prelims and semis. Like I sat on people until the 150 and then I took off the last 50. So um, it, I think before the race started, I was like, okay, well, like I'll go out fast and see what happens. And I think I hit the 75 in the race and I was like, I don't feel very good. So I shut it down. I stopped. I stopped trying to go out like an idiot. I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go long. and see like how close I can hang to the 150 and then I'll go. And I didn't realize I was in fifth when I turned. Um, we were, we were, eh, we were pretty close. I was still kind of far back, but I wasn't like, I wasn't as in my head. I wasn't as far back as I actually was. Um, and yeah, then I took off the last 50. So um, it was kind of like a play by ear race. It was really weird. It was one where I had to be super patient, which I don't like to do <laughs> all the time. Um, but I knew that that's what I had to do to win that race. Um, 
So that, my strategy was like changing throughout, <laughs> throughout the swim, just based on how I felt. So, um, yeah, it just like, I just personally think like swimming the race at the same time, every time you swim it is just strategically not the best move. Cause like, I've actually talked to Murph about this so much. Like we know what everyone's going to do. Like, okay, I'm going to wait and you're going to die in the last 50. You're going to go too fast on the third 50. You're going to go out like, like, you know what everyone's going to do. So, um, so yeah, I definitely took advantage of that for this case. Seems like a veteran move. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it seems like something, something you learn with a lot of experience on the international yeah. stage. And uh, I, where, where do you feel like, or do you feel like that that patience has been developed or been able to be developed over just having that experience on the international stage? Yeah, on it, honestly, I would credit it most to ISL um, just because that gives us an opportunity to race at a high level, but with not as high of stakes. So we're like normal, like five years ago, I would have been so scared to do that. Like now I'm like, okay, I've raced these people so many times. Like it's not any different. It's just like higher stakes. Um, that like ISLs, like get, even though it's short course, like has given me that opportunity to play with different strategies and, you know, be more confident and, you know, going a fast first 50 and a fast last 50. So, you know, it's just like the more racing experience you get at that stage, obviously that like makes you more experienced, but um, I think for me, it just gave me the confidence to kind of play around a little bit in the race. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. Um, do you miss ISL? I'm sad that there's no ISL this year. Yeah, I just, I don't miss being away that much, but I do miss like the team and racing short course. Like that's the best. Um, the meets are so much fun. Like six week long training camp in the middle of November, not the best thing, um, but um, I miss the people and I miss the racing a lot. So yeah, we'll see what happens this fall and next fall and who knows. <laughs> and who knows, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so now now you're back home in Indiana. Uh, mm -hmm. what's, what's the rest of the summer look like and, and what's kind of the next year look like moving forward in terms of when you pick back up training? Yeah, so I'm actually taking my first break like ever, um, which has been great so far. I haven't lost my mind yet. Uh, but yeah, I realized during my little like week long COVID hiatus that uh, that was my longest break where I wasn't scheduled to do anything <laughs> or be anywhere or like have an appearance since 2017. So I was like, it's been five years. Like, let's, okay, it, it's time. It was kind of like just in that moment, I was like, I haven't stopped. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm taking, well, I'm like taking the rest of the summer off of training with the team. Um, I'll be back like when this is my plan, at least if I don't lose my mind. Um, I think I'll be back like when the team starts up in August, uh, I might go swim at the outdoor pool, you know, get some sun, do, do a little 3k, whatever, uh, by myself. But I think I'm just going to like chill and, you know, exercise at home <laughs> until yeah for a couple of months here so it's it's a new experience it's like a whole new world um but yeah nice what what uh how does that manifest for you exercising do you are you a runner are you do you lift do you do dry land stuff do you play pickleball <laughs> i would love to play pickleball that'd be so much fun um so i am I don't really enjoy land exercising. I love to play games. Like I'd love to go play pickleball or like do something like that. Um, but I've been running and I running isn't super kind to me. Um, so I'm trying to get there. It's kind of one of those, like, okay, just don't get fat when you're off. Um, so yeah, I'm just doing like little you know, 20 minute run walks and I'll jump some rope or and do some squats and push-ups and stuff. I might go rock climbing. I've never done that before. Um, yeah. And what, what else am I doing? I'm just trying to like kind of be active. Like I'm not like, I'm going to go to an exercise class. Like that's not me at all. Um, but just like being active and, and not being like unbelievably lazy all day. That's kind of my goal. So we'll see. Nice. 
Um, <laughs> well, Lily, I appreciate you taking the time out of your uh, unscheduled break to sit down and chat so, with us. I've been so busy. I'm so glad I fit you in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you could pencil us in. Um, <laughs> any, any, any parting thoughts before we sign off today? No, nah, I, I mean, hey, like it's if like any like kids are watching and can learn anything from my COVID experience, like just, you know, just be patient and, and control the things that you can control and um, just know that if you have a good attitude, like things can turn out pretty quickly. So um, that's pretty much my parting wisdom, I guess. Um, but yeah, just have a good attitude and you have like no idea how, how much that can change your day or somebody else's day around. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.